Hello, we're here today to talk to the actress Lucy Speed. We're interested in her experiences as a long-term acne sufferer. Lucy, was it hard being on television with acne? Um, yeah, it did get a bit hard in the end. Quite often I knew that I had a spot. I might wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is check, oh, what does it feel like today? And um, I would see that the lighting guy was trying to light quietly, very politely, around my skin, trying to make my skin look as best as possible, or the makeup artist would hang around me a bit longer than the other actors and actresses, and I would try and make a joke about it. Luckily, I had the sort of personality that was able to cope with it, but it was very much bravado, and I'd joke and say, look, everyone, I've got a new friend with a new postcode, and yes, I've got a great big spot. Normally, I'd exasperated the situation by picking at it, manically the night before, trying all sorts of things. And so I had to suck up a lot of courage sometimes to step on to set and face yet another day of making light of my situation. Did it affect your self-confidence when you was acting? It did, yeah. I think I might have played certain roles differently if I hadn't have been a bit self-conscious about my skin. Um, and I especially... Uh, would get concerned if there was a scene where I would have to wash my face or um, kiss somebody because um, I didn't really want anyone touching my skin or rubbing any of my makeup off. Um, I would only get the odd spot, but I would constantly have three or four spots, very sort of hormonal spots, and they'd be quite big. So I couldn't really hide the landscape of my skin and cast shadows, and you've got lots of lights on you. So I couldn't help but be conscious of, of my skin. Did you have treatment or advice for your acne? I had endless treatment and advice for my acne, and quite often the wrong treatment or advice. I think when you suffer with your skin, you become quite desperate to try anything that anyone suggests. Um, so I tried everything from N-Light laser to... Uh, researching different reasons for bad skin on the internet and ordering uh, super green tablets. Um, I tried microdermabrasion, blue light therapy, um, acupuncture, which was just filling me with holes, making me bleed. Um, everything and anything that I thought might help and from anybody's suggestion. And... Actually, for me, it was much more of an emotional and hormonal issue, and I was probably going down the wrong road quite often. And I also did try antibiotics, not um, Reactane, because I really didn't want to take that, but I tried oxytetracycline, which was given to me by the GP, and stayed on a contraceptive pill for a long time uh, in thought that it might help my skin, which it actually did a little bit, but perhaps not as much as it should have done. Um, so I endlessly tried things, and that was very frustrating when things didn't work out, and expensive too. Did it affect any of your relationships? I'm not sure if it, it affected any of my relationships. I was always in a long-term relationship, and I'm married now, and uh, when I met my husband, my skin wasn't as good as it is now. Um, Maybe it did with me, confidence-wise. It might have affected me when I was single and who I may or may not have, have, have approached. Um, and where I went, I perhaps didn't go out a lot as a teenage. Uh, as a 20-year-old, I in my 20s, I stayed in more. Um, confidence-wise, I, I wasn't probably at my best. What age did your spots get worse? I was quite a lucky teenager. I didn't have teenage acne. And my skin was really good, and uh, I was filming then as well as a child. And remember the days when a makeup artist would say, "Oh, you just need a little bit of Carmex, and you're off a bit of mascara." And, and suddenly, my spots, probably by about 21, um, and just as other people's skin was clearing up and they were looking amazing, mine was was flaring up, and um, I was having a terrible time with it. And I was also on TV then in front of 20 million people regularly in EastEnders, so I don't know that anybody knew how to deal with my skin at that age. You spoke about medication. Did you try any home remedies to get rid of acne? I tried lots of home remedies. I tried, um, I tried taking flaxseed, uh, 
in a drink, which was disgusting. I tried a cold compress on my face, so I'd sit there all night constantly dabbing my face with a piece of chilled cotton. Um, I tried putting lavender oil on my face, and um, I don't know where I got that one from, somewhere on the internet. And I remember waking up in the morning and I'd given myself a third degree burn. <laughs> I had to go into work and I think I was one of the first times I had a date with my husband and I had to make up something about burning myself with the hot irons. I don't know, it was really awful. Um, what else did I try? I tried salt, putting salt, oh, just anything, really. Anything that anyone suggested and anything that was on the internet, you know, those little things that flash up. This is the answer to good skin and you think, oh, should I go on it? Is it going to be a trick? Oh, I'll try it. Um, sending off for all sorts of miracle pills and um, anything the doctor told me to do, I did it, and anything anyone else told me to do, I did it. All with limited results. With try and order um, remedies, what worked best for you? Eventually, um, I found a doctor out of pure exasperation, really, um, that had come recommended to me, and kind of just gave them my problem and just went, you tell me what I have to do, and I'll do it. And it was very simply topical uh, solution for me. But what was the big thing was that I gave them my problem, and I could go back to them constantly and say, this isn't working, or that's changed, or I need this. And it was a tailored answer really for me because they would go okay fine use this a bit more use that less try this do that and the relief the stress that was taken off my shoulders by giving my problem away so really my answer was was all the energy that I put into into placebo products and drugs and things that didn't work um looking on the internet and trying to find my own way and second guessing and all the t mental torture I put myself through putting the energy back into the doctor and going back and saying, this is what's happening, that's what's happening, and forcing them to keep finding me different solutions. When did your acne start to go? Uh, well, I still suffer with acne, and I think I'm always going to be a sufferer. Um, but I have it under control, and I've learned about my skin, and I've learned what works for me. Um, but it was really incredibly quickly into my new regime. So after 10 years of trying so many things that didn't work and being so pessimistic about anybody finding anything that did work, once I did find what worked for me, it was very quickly resolved and it began to clear up. I also know what works for me. My skin does flare up uh, at times, hormonal times or stressful times, but I know how to deal with it. So now I know how to control my acne and know what to do and what not to do at that sort of time. And that takes a lot of the stress away. If I don't have a spot, I've always got a spot coming or just getting rid of a spot. And luckily now it'll only be one or two and they're not such a big issue. So I, they're still in my life, but they're not controlling my life anymore. Do people actually talk to you about your acne? Um, frustratingly, all the wrong people spoke to me about my acne and um, when I was feeling most vulnerable, when I was in a makeup chair or whatever, as lovely as the girls were, everybody without fail, every makeup person, day in, day out, would have a suggestion about my skin as if I was really doing nothing about it. And I found that my personality was becoming very clipped and a bit angry, which wasn't me at all, uh, but I didn't want to speak about it, so I'd end up doing my own makeup just to avoid that conversation. And just as frustratingly, bless them, I think when I spoke to my friends about it, they were like, oh, you haven't got bad skin. I never think of you having bad skin. Your skin looks great, this, that and the other. So uh, I, I don't know, apart from my parents, whether I ever got the conversation that I needed. And my mum and dad were great, and my mum was a sufferer. and. And this was back in the 60s, and I think had she have got rid of her skin issues sooner rather than later, that she would have been a very different person. And I think that's what's happening nowadays. People don't need to suffer as long as they do. I suffered for 10 years, and that was unnecessary, and that's frustrating. But I now know that it, you can get rid of your skin problem or contain it and control it very quickly within six months. So 
that's a massive issue for me, is making sure that everybody knows that they can all get the help they need um, from the right place very quickly. Did you ever get depressed about your acne? I would get very down about my acne. And I think that um, depression and the word depression are two very different things. Uh, I think feeling very down about it is, is one thing, but, but actually being clinically depressed is a totally another. I know that, I know that some drugs um, that treat acne can trigger mental health issues, but I definitely got very down and very um, uh, exhausted by my skin condition. If I was going to give anyone any advice about their skin, I would say that you must go to the right people to get the right advice. Um, your GP is a brilliant place to start and to not stop until you get something that works for you because absolutely there is something that works for you. You don't have to suffer for a long time. And I can't explain how many people I speak to that suffer with their skin. I would say 80% to 90% of everybody that I speak to, famous actors, um, makeup girls, directors, um, regular friends, all suffer with their skin or have suffered with their skin at some point. This is something that everybody suffers from, whether it's uh, m more obvious or not. Um, it absolutely shouldn't hold you back. And it hasn't held me back and it hasn't held lots of people back and all that holds you back is your mind and whether you're a can-do or a can't-do person. And everybody can be a can-do person and it doesn't come down to your skin and what it looks like. And your, your skin is treatable. It's not going to hold anyone back. Only you can hold yourself back.